If you are excited about the new AMD Zen 5 CPUs or thinking of getting one, you are in the right place. In this video, I will show you some cool tweaks and tips to supercharge your CPU's performance and get the best bang for your buck. Let's dive in and unlock its full potential. With the latest CPUs, particularly the lower end 6 and 8 core chips, we now have lower TDP of 65 watts, which means they can be much more power efficient and easier to cool. Our tests have shown that out of the box, these CPUs run reasonably fast, but you can get anywhere from 2 to 13% increased performance just by using some existing AMD tools. Let's start with the basics. You'll need a motherboard that supports overclocking, such as any of the AM5 boards from the X or the B series. In our example, we're using the ASRock X670E Tai Chi motherboard. All the overclocking settings are done using Ryzen Master software, so you don't even need to open up BIOS. First and likely the easiest setting to adjust is enabling RAM overclocking. If you've purchased RAM specifically designed for AMD system, it will likely have an AMD Expo preset. Open Ryzen Master software and in the basic view, select Expo on the bottom right. Then click apply and test. This will restart the system and apply the settings. After the restart, Ryzen Master will reopen and run a quick test to check stability. Enabling RAM overclocking often provides you with performance boost at no extra cost, or more accurately, the performance you originally paid for. In our tests, the 9600X chip consistently performed better with Expo enabled, while the 9700X had mixed results. Do bear in mind that if you go past 6000 MHz, your system stability might be affected. It really depends on the CPU and memory combo. While the new CPUs are rated to handle up to 8000 MHz, be cautious of the up to wording. Next up we have my favorite setting, AMD PBO, Precision Boost Overdrive. This feature essentially removes many of the limits on the CPU, enhancing both single and multi-threaded performance. I also like to increase CPU boost clock by about 200 MHz, and so far I have encountered no issues with this adjustment. Fair warning though, your CPU will start eating power like crazy and will get hot under full load, but this isn't necessarily a problem. To achieve maximum performance, you'll need a cooler that can handle the additional power. The better your cooler, the more performance you can extract. Alternatively, you can use the Auto OC in Ryzen Master, which enables PBO and increases all the limits while boosting the clock speed. We found that it brings the power limits from the high 80s to over 160 watts, but depending on your cooler, you might not be able to sustain it. For us, it went from stock at 63 degrees Celsius to overclocked TJ Maxx of 95 degrees, but we also see 900 MHz frequency bump under full load. This resulted in about 11% increase in Cinebench R23 scores and about 10% improvement in 7-zip multicore compression performance. The one problem with PPO is that it's designed for the masses, and since each chip has slightly different characteristics, the CPU generally receives a bit more voltage than needed for stability. This results in higher power consumption and temperatures. This is where the curve optimizer comes in. It allows you to tailor your motherboard to the unique characteristics of your specific chip, maximizing performance while keeping it under control. This is a slightly more involved process and you will need to select offsets and then run optimizer, which takes about an hour each time. Then test your particular programs or games to see if it's stable. AMD recommends setting the offset between minus 10 and minus 15. In my tests, I used minus 30 and I saw a significant performance boost, but encountered stability issues in multi-threaded workloads. Reducing to minus 20 stabilized the system in all tests and provided even better performance. For example, in V-Ray, switching from Auto OC to Curve Optimizer with a minus 20 offset resulted in nearly 4% gain. In Cinebench R24, we saw about 3% improvement, and this was one of the tests that didn't complete with the minus 30 offset. To illustrate the results, let's see what happens on the CPU itself. Just like before, CPU still hits TJ Maxx of 95 degrees Celsius and uses the same amount of power as Auto OC. However, if we look at the CPU frequency, we gained about 250 MHz, and this was all done just by using the tools already provided by the AMD. I feel this is especially useful for those lower TDP chips, as they are easier to cool. For transparency, we used Be Quiet Elite Cooler which is a high-end option, but not the absolute top tier in cooling. But things don't end here. For the tinkerers out there, AMD introduced a new tool called Curve Shaper, which offers even more control over the curve. This requires accessing your bias for tweaking and will depend heavily on your specific system workload and requirements. I intentionally kept this video user-friendly, 
but if there is enough interest, we can do a deep dive into this tool and provide examples how to use it. Let us know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Which brings us to the conclusion. We again have chips that have some extra headroom to play with, and I would generally recommend anyone to enable the RAM overclocking and run Expo Profile if your stick support it, and then turn on Auto OC with Curve Optimizer Offset. Test it out and see if you like it. You can always reset the settings in Ryzen Master, and there are plenty of other settings to experiment with if you're into that. I think I will end it here. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, we'll try our best to answer them. If you want to check out the latest chips further, the links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.